What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle today taking a second look at the Banner Saga, Stoic Studios recently released indie viking RPG. And in the previous episode there had been a bit of a coup, so the guy that runs this longhouse up here that had made this city, he basically established the whole thing, made it from a fishing village up into a badass awesome viking castle. Now there are dicks from all around the yard trying to come and take it from him. We stopped the first wave using our giant viking varls, which are like these giants with huge horns coming out of their foreheads, and then also we have a couple humans too who seem a bit bane, <laughs> they seem a little bit <laughs> mundane by comparison to the VAR, but that's fine. Now, a bunch of longships have docked, and we've got to figure out what's going on there. That's enough for the recap, let's get this thing moving. Vognir. A familiar Varl steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Ubin, you're looking ancient. Comes with being old, and if there is Vognir, there must be Hakon. Must there? Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yaks? At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Jerunder demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returned from Arborang, in fact. And glad for it. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden Wolfhead emblazoned on red, the king of men or someone on his behalf. The king's whelp. The king's son, Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon has had it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grofheim? I have the distinct feeling I finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but eh, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow with the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Where is Morgir? Hack on. Have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few. Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Morgir. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Luden looks for all the world like the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it's been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Wagner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. Well, since we're a giant, I don't know, this guy looks, he looks a little skeevy to me. He's got like a Bieber fever type thing going on with him, so I think I'm going to step on over here. Let's go have some beers. I mean, I never turned down a run at the pub in real life, so why do it here? Scrivener! You find Hakon in a mead house surrounded by other Varl. Strand is no stranger to Varl, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for the flagon, eh? Vognir's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise there. What this time? When I got here, the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Heh, <laughs> humans. I guess if I only lived as long as a yox fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself, too. It's not too late to start trying, Hakon. Hakon lets slip a low chuckle. Any Varl would recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swath through dredge at Vognir's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm just a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point, just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Alright, so we've had, we've gotten down into the bottom of our cups. We're probably feeling a little bit saucy now. Let's go talk to the prince, and we'll clap him in his ear if he tries to give us any trouble. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Varl who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby with her arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Luden. Yes, you're with Vognir. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Vognir a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grofheim with my guards. Luden looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Ah, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? 
just to introduce myself. You collect taxes for the Varl territories? That must be a true pleasure. Yep. An awkwardness hangs in the air like a thick fog. You take the opportunity to depart. Yeah, you always have those moments. I remember there was this girl that I knew back in high school, and I was trying to, you know, I was trying to get on a little datey date, and we would have those awkward silences that would just hang in between, and after a while you learn to deal with them, but definitely I think none of us are unfamiliar with that circumstance. They want us to go to the Great Hall, so let's head on out there. At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply leathers, all there, as promised, to your mild surprise. You wonder if Eric had anything to do with that. Your guards are taken, or your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vognir is already here. A while later, Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Mogir steps forward, Vognir's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of this unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing, he asks if you're ready to depart. Hell yeah, we're ready, let's get this thing on the road. You follow Mogir and join the others. Usually the small doors, or usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are not best heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strandwell as a whole, you think. Alright, and we are on our way. We are traveling. I suppose that's us right there, and this appears to be a counter that's counting the days along the way. This is kind of an interesting feature. On top of that, we've got our days of supplies listed here. We've got Varls, Fighters, and Klansmen, and our overall morale, and what appears to be our renown. Now that t I bet something's gonna happen at this bridge. Bad shit always happens at bridges. I'm calling it. Oh, nope, we just got a little swirly do. Never mind, nothing terrible happened at the bridge. What do I know about storytelling or anything else? The caravan stops for the day. A gift, says Mogir, cracking open mead casks from our gracious friend, the Governor of Strand. Hours pass with raucous laughter as the mead is passed throughout the camp. Let's toast Vognir. We want to keep our host in good spirits. You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between Man and Varl. The others join in. Luden's expression is like a stone wall, but the others laugh at your exaggerations. Eventually, you sit down beside Vognir. Since we just toasted him, let's go easy on the drink. I've got a bad feeling about all this. You go easy. You've nothing against a good drink, but if anyone is going to keep an eye on things, it may as well be you. The revelers eventually fall asleep without incident. You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. Mogir is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Luden stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up, you nudge Vognir. You're needed. Ah, it's Luden. Always a pressure. A pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Vognir releases a caged yawn and receives a hard eyed stare in return. How long to Grofheim? <laughs> We're only two days out of Strand, you know? Come on, I'll show you a map. So we've been given the world map, and we can look around. Our portrait tells us where we are, and when we're done with it, we can click the bottom of the screen to piss off and actually get back to action. Let's get back to some action. I don't really... It's kind of a cool map, though. It's definitely got a Lord of the Rings type thing going on. Let's see if we can find Minas Tirith here. Where is Rohan? Never mind. Let's get out of this. Enough bad humor for the moment. We head north then east past the forts. Grafheim's far from Strand. It's gonna be a long march. You should have <laughs> you should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skymerstead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stayed covered in ice for all the entire year. It'd tear up the long ships. Too bad though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Skrimmerstead. A half drunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Luden exhales through his nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the anthill, Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off too. Luden's got a shorter wick than hack on. Thanks, Wagner. Let's get moving. Another half day to Vetterfell if we're lucky. Talking about short wicks? You're gonna get somebody offended up in here. Can't talk about another man's wick like that. Apparently, this is where we manage our caravan, and we can camp any time. So, while at the camp or towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass the time by using rest, and it improves our morale. Basically, hanging out, doing jack shit, nothing makes everybody happier. 
High morale reduces casualties in war and affects your willpower in combat. Each passing day will use supplies, so only rest when you are absolutely sure it's necessary. We can train, so we can safely try out characters. Okay. So we got a bunch of stuff we can do right now. Wants us to check out the hero's tent first, though, so that's what they're going to do. What is that giant woolly thing? I want to pet it. I want to run my fingers through its awesome fur and itch its little tummy. Anyways, let's get away from the cute animals for a second. We can promote ranks? Okay, let's go to... I say we'll go to Gunnel first. We can click on abilities. Okay, and it gives you the animation too, although he's the wrong color. It still looks badass though. And then we can promote him. Let's close that on down. We can pan our way through each individual. Let's do the promotion. And so we can either increase his item rank, or we can build him some higher stats. I think I'm going to go... Yeah, let's promote him. We might as well, just so we can get a feel of what all this is. So we can go with his might, we can go with armor, we can go with his skills there. What does this do? Okay, so that's just his background story. So everybody's got their own thing you can take a look at. We have two points available. So we can cancel those out as well. So that's good. If you make any mistakes, you could jump straight on in and fix them, which is always a feature that I'm really, really happy to find. There's nothing worse than being stuck with your decisions. That's a real life thing for me too. You'd be like, ah, oh, I wish I could load a save right now. But anyways, we can go for more armor or we can go for more strength. I think since strength is a, it's giving the appearance that strength is kind of his main stat. If you look, its cap is the absolute highest. I'm going to go for a strength. And that's how much armor he can bust up. Interesting. And so I think it goes by kills, maybe? What is this? I'm clicking it, but nothing's going to happen. We'll figure that out later. In any case, I think I'm just going to give him strength for now. Let's keep him as a pure for the moment. And I'll make adaptations to the plan as we go through the game and get a little bit further in, and it seems like we need more things. We'll confirm that right there, and then we'll head on back. It appears as though nobody else can be upgraded. And I was just testing out whether the escape key would let me get the hell out of here right now. It does not appear to be the case. Oh, and we get to choose our turn order, which is a very, very interesting way to play out the game. This means that I get to choose who goes first in combat, it appears. I don't know if that's absolutely the truth. We'll figure it out as the game goes along. But for someone like me, that's actually a really unique way to approach battles. Typically, strategy games have like an initiative system or the person with the highest dexterity goes first. But in this case, we're being, we're being given the option. So we can actually front load all of our AOE type guys or our high movement, high damage individuals. Sort of a nice bit of customization right there that you can play around with your turn order. Next up, I suppose... I don't know if we should fight a training battle or not. Let me take a look at my heroes first and just get a feel for what they do. So for him, he has Impale. He skewers the enemy doing normal strength damage before kicking them away. It does a knockback and causes them to bleed if they move on their next turn. A character who is bleeding will take one strength damage for every space that they move, which is especially deadly for enemies that are moved against their will. Alright, so that's not too terrible. If you look at the animations, they sort of remind me of the old animations from some of those DreamWorks movies from back in the day. Actually, I don't know if I have the right company, but this kind of reminds me of like Fern Gully and things of that nature. Thumbelina, all those old animations. Let's go back, let's check out and see what Hacken does. Hacken's got Sundering Impact. The War Master hits even harder than an average warrior with no chance to miss. He can wreak havoc with an additional plus one strength and plus one break impact damage to the target, plus bonuses to heavy impact. It's best used when carefully positioned to impact as many enemies around the target as possible in a single strike. So we'll have to play around with the AoE on that in the first place. So it's enemies that are adjacent. Okay. So basically he can hit about three people at the same time right there. That's a pretty sweet ability. That might be useful. And then Mogear. Bring the pain. The shield master strikes an adjacent enemy for armor damage before hunkering down and boosting his passive ability. Return the favor to return even more armor damage for one turn. By using Bring the Pain, the shield master can create forward charge that punishes enemies for ganging up against him. So he's got a little bit of tanking action right there. I also like the fact that he has a flanged mace. I'm a cleric by trade whenever I play games like this. So anybody that has a mace or like a big old morning star is usually my favorite. What does this do right here? Return the favor. Anybody who attacks him loses a point of armor for each strike that he makes. Wow, that seems like a pretty good ability. Although, I wonder if he still takes the same amount of damage. It seems like it boosts the ability. Oh, he returns double the damage. Okay, so he's going to be our tank. He's going to be the... And he looks like a tank. Look at that face. This guy is built like a stone wall. 
Anyways, let's get back to it. I feel like I'm doing a little bit too little action here for what we're trying to accomplish in this LP, so let's be on our way. Weather fell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. Okay. Wasn't expecting to have dialogue or conversational interactions here. I was trying to be antisocial, but whatever. Go ahead, narrator. Hi, Jack. By Haterborg, that's a lot of varl for some missing cattle. What? A couple days back, sent word to Strand about the cattle. I didn't expect an army. He looks pleased with himself until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. Where have your cattle gone? I wouldn't know. My boy's seen men up on the hills carrying them away. Don't know how many men who can hoist a whole crew. <laughs> Don't know many men who can hoist a whole cow by themselves. Scalfings out here, maybe? Could they have the varl working for them? Not from what the governor told me. I'm gonna take a look around and get camp set up. The peasant spits, his eyes anxiously darting about the caravan as it sets up the tents. We'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. For hundreds of varl? You serious? Whatever you're willing to sell. You thinking of squatting? Not enough room for a couple of hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Shut up. Hear that? Where's Luden? It's faint. Sounds like fighting and something else. Hacken takes off at a run. Ah, okay, so we can tell them where they want to go by using waypoints. Basically what it said is that using our left click, we can set up a series of waypoints so that you weave your way around the enemy and you avoid the situation that you run into in a lot of strategy games where you accidentally eat attacks of opportunity just sort of at random because like you'll click over here but then your character will be like, wee and run in front and get himself smacked up like crazy. We've got our side Bernie friend here, so let's move him on over to that location and we'll confirm the move. Spearman can attack diagonally and up to two tiles away. And so we can compare our stats with the enemies. This must be a dredge. It seems to be some kind of steamwork viking. It looks like something you might see. It's got a bit of like a marvel thing going on as well. But anyways. Now click the enemy. Okay. And then it wants me to armor blocks attacks on strength. For each point that an enemy's armor is higher than your strength, there's a 10% chance the attack will be deflected. I see. Notice the chance to hit shown above the attack button. Attack this enemy. Deflected attacks will do no damage from here on out. You will fail catastrophically if you don't break armor. Damaging both strength and armor is equally important, and they put that in caps. On the internet, that means either somebody shouting very loudly, or it just becomes necessary to draw the point there. They could have underlined it further and also bolded it if they really wanted to get the point across. Holy Christ, that was a giant hit. Okay, so we're getting up into the battle now. It looks like they've given us Modir and Hawknir. Basically, all of our Varl have decided to show up in this combat. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to move up on this guy, and we're going to see if we can sunder some of that armor. He's got Sundering Impact, and I think I'm going to go for it. So we've bashed his armor up a little bit, but at the same time, we didn't really hurt him. At this point, I think I'm just going to make a line. What can he do, actually? He can get there if he moves on us. I'm going to make kind of a staggered echelon or like a chevron line. And then we'll end the turn. And with this guy right here, I'm going to move into the side. And maybe we'll get some kind of flanking action going on. In any case, Tempest isn't going to do us much good here. So we're going to attack. And we can deal three damage, or we can go straight after his armor. And I think that's probably a reasonably decent plan right now, although we can do more. We can do three damage to his strength, which will lower the amount of damage he deals. Let's go for it. There it is. I want to lower the amount of damage he deals in the future. Ow. Right upside my head. Nasty style. Well then, let's keep this train a-running. I'm going to keep sundering his armor the best I can. We can do four right there if we use some of our, what is that called again? Willpower, that's right. Let's sunder that by four, although 
it appears as though you have to do like some kind of strength comparison. Now that he's taking damage, his strength is lower, but his armor is still reasonably high. At least it's higher than Mogir over here. Taking a little bit of damage right there. Let's step on in. I'm gonna have him use Bring the Pain. And because of that, yeah, he should deal damage back, which will be really, really nice. Over here, what can we do to this guy? Nothing, because our strength is lowered. On that side, we're not really going to accomplish anything either. We might then consider going after Tempest, which is what I think I'll do. Since we can't accomplish anything anyways. God. Alright, well the game appears to have a reasonable amount of challenge roped into it, and I'm thinking focusing on this guy was a bad idea. However, we are going to get in here, and I'm going to see if I can take him out in one fell swoop with the guys that are still healed. Let's add as much damage as we can to that docket. There we are. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage right now. I'm going to go all out with all of my willpower and see if we got to eliminate somebody before they eliminate us. Whenever an enemy falls in battle, you gain one willpower through your horn. Using the horn will give one willpower to the active ally. I don't necessarily know if running away is going to work in this case. But we are going to try it. Alright, well that leaves us 2v2 now, which is unfortunate, but these guys appear to be a lot weaker, so we'll see what kind of headway we can make against them. We're going to do a full 6 damage to this guy, straight into his backy spiny area. A little bit of damage returned from that gent right there, but it's only one, it's something we can deal with. And then on this side, we're going to step forward. Oh no, that's not what I wanted, don't end the turn. Let's go for a full-on strike. He's got some willpower left. We're going to go for it. So there's five damage dealt, which is going to put him as combat ineffective. As you can tell, they're not really going to be hitting that hard from here on out. And what we learned in this battle is that it may not be the best idea to focus on their main mega tank in the middle. Kind of pull the same strategy that they pulled on us. I also should probably put my tank up first. I hadn't really thought about that in terms of the combat order. But if we put our tank up first, he'll be able to take the lead. And once he gets up and forward and into the middle of the fray, he can soak all that damage and kind of sunder as many people's armor as possible. Let's get seven damage off right there. Down he goes. Down into the negatives. Taking a bit more damage. Actually, no. Let's go out to there. And now that he's used up all of his willpower, we'll go for a final strike against this gent. I mean, I don't know if he's a gent. He could be a gentle lady, I suppose. Oh, cool. We got back-to-back -back turns. I love back-to-back -back turns. What's not to like? And so down he goes. I don't think we had any upgrades during that whole thing, but we'll get some more renown, which will be nice. Ah, Hakon's ready for promotion. Great. Only five bonus renown, but let's figure out what's going on with the storyline here. This seems a little odd. You trying to get yourself killed, Luton? What are you doing? I was trying, finding a, trying to get a shot in between the plates. You never seen a dredge before, boy? What kind of idiot? Break their armor first. Where'd they come from? We didn't even see them. They were just there. Hakon goes to where Vognir lies face down. The future Varl King lies motionless aside from the spreading pool of blood. Vognir's dead. Cut with a keen-edged sword. Oh, we're switching storylines now. <laughs> that is a look of panic right there. Where did that thing come from? Shh, stay close. I think it saw us. Alright, so with our deployment, I'm going to scoot people forward. 
and there we are. So what I'm going to do is, we're actually out of time right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this off, and in the next episode we'll continue this combat. My name is Splattercat. Today we were looking at Stoic Studios, the Banner Saga, which is a pretty sweet game. I'm really excited. I'm having a lot of fun with it to the point that I'm a little bit butterfly about it. It's rare that games of this quality come out, and I look forward to playing the third episode with you. I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.